I'm so excited today to be able to talk with Dr. Bruno Pereira on the reality pill. Dr. Pereira is from Marbella, Spain, and I met him personally on one of my uh, international lecturing journeys where I sat in the audience and was completely mesmerized by his ability to explain and understand facial anatomy, facial flow, and the misunderstandings of symmetry and where symmetry actually comes into play. He has contributed a lot to the way I understand the face and how I'm able to explain it to patients. We are in totally different realms. I do facial plastic surgery. He's focused more on restorative and cosmetic dentistry, but his understanding of facial anatomy and facial balance and harmony is unmatched. So I'm so honored to be able to talk to him and show you the things that he has contributed to my own practice and the way that I talk to my patients. One of the curious things here is now we're implementing this digital technology in dentistry. So actually now we can design teeth which are completely symmetrical and they look awful in the patient's mouth. And the reason is very simple. So when you have something like uh, symmetric, it starts to look very artificial. But when we, even if we think about this ideal, this could be the ideal smile. When you put on the patient's mouth, in the patient's face, which is never symmetric, is going to look also very artificial. And so uh, there's a lot of, lot of uh, literature, research regarding what makes a smile, what makes a face um, look uh, beautiful. And actually, I start to, to study these things by accident. So at the, at the very first beginning, I start to, to look into how the symmetries of the face can actually interfere in the way that we look at the smile. Right. So at the beginning, we, we, if we talk about symmetry, you have to talk about like midline. So it's a very, very important landmark when we look into the dental world, the, the midline. So everybody gets very obsessed about the midline. So one of the things that I realize in my patients is sometimes the midline is in the right place. But for example, a patient has a nose by going towards the, the right and patients complain about the dental midline. So I start to, to put things together and uh, this was back in 2006 and I started to assemble like a research figuring out if the nose actually interferes in the way we see teeth. The and nose? Was, yeah, the nose. The nose and the chin symmetries. And I realized that, yes, actually when you have deviations of the teeth that goes in the opposite direction of the nose and chin asymmetries, you start to realize it earlier. For example, small deviations of dental midline can be an issue, aesthetically speaking. Okay? Mm -hmm. Or even a patient in the center of the face can say, okay, I have a deviated midline. And it's not the midline, it's the nose. Yeah, and I've, and I've seen you, uh, you know, when you're teaching, you're most of the time in the, in the introduction of these things, you're not even talking about teeth. You're really explaining uh, the face symmetry, balance, and the flow overall. So um, to help, you know, explain this to, to patients, I always say, that it's not symmetry that makes someone beautiful. There's, there's a range of symmetry for sure that contributes to it. Uh, but all that symmetry contributes is that if you're very asymmetric, like Quasimodo, you know, like we mentioned, like the, the Hunchback of Notre Dame, it stands out to people and doesn't really look good when they're, when, when, you know, to, to another person's eye. And then if you're completely symmetric, I think it's robotic. And the completely symmetric is something that we've seen, as you said before, with, with chimeras. So what have you seen with, with those? Yes, there's a, actually one, one, one of the interesting things about that is they, some research says that they probably the reason that when we look into a chimera or something that is very symmetric is artificial and cold has been related with our emotions. We always express our emotions in one side of the face. The emotions to be re real are mm -hmm. always asymmetric expressed in our face. 
Right, and that comes from how our brains are wired. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, so even in, when you act as a, a good actor, mm -hmm. you realize and you feel it more if it's asymmetric or it's not asymmetric, uh, and that's that's scientifically explained. Okay. And so if you put something really symmetric, it's going to it's not going to be real, real or emotional. It won't connect. And that's right. part so, of the decision. Right, and, and that, that makes a lot of sense because the, the, the way the brain is wired for the way you know, we, we, we think, we talk, uh, everything has a preferred side as it comes out. And other people, when we speak like that, we project that onto other people so they can feel your emotion and your expression. And if everything comes out exactly the same <laughs> without uh, differences on either side of the face, that is similar, I think, to somebody having zero expression. Like they just kind of, they look stiff and they look at you and they're not, um, you know, they're, they're not communicating properly. And I've had people say, well, my doctor told me, and they say that like, as though it's a fact, they said, I, I had my doctor tell me that this is my bad side because I sleep on that side. This is my bad side because I drive on that side. Um, and I try to explain to them that your doctor is probably wrong. There's very rare cases that the side you sleep on is the worst side or the best side. And that's if you have like severe sleep apnea uh, or something like that. Realistically, what people should be noticing or uh, are noticing and just don't understand is that we have a dominant side to the face. We're right-handed. We're left-handed. We're not asymmetric animals. We're, we're not symmetric animals. We're very asymmetric. And the dominant side is the stronger side. And the stronger side of the face sits higher. It has deeper shadows on it. The weaker side sits lower and has more drooping. And the stronger side typically is where the pull goes on the face. Um, and I, you know, I, I, I would love for you to show some of your slides that we can go through and you kind of uh, show the flow and the actual facial midline meaning the, the midline doesn't have to go straight you know, down the middle. It's actually balanced. So I have a couple of yeah. slides. Let's see what we got here. So, so what are we looking at here? Here you're looking into some chimeras. Okay, so you have on the left the natural, which is a, an asymmetric and natural face. And then you have the right side, mirrored and the left side. So basically uh, my point here is we want to show how asymmetric our faces are. And sometimes we are not very conscious about this because this guy actually is my friend and he's also a patient, but I, I try to make the point that when you look into these people's face and you're not conscious how asymmetric we, we are. And also when you try to make it symmetrical, it doesn't look better than the natural asymmetric face because actually is our is how, how the way we are is we are naturally imperfect and asymmetric and there's a really interesting um, research regarding regarding symmetry and what they actually what they have done they basically showed to the subjects only the split one half of the face. So if you have one half of the face, actually you cannot see if you're symmetric or not. Mm -hmm. But coincidentally or not, people rated the most symmetric faces as the better without seeing the half of it. So basically what my point is, it, it might be something about symmetric people besides symmetry, which might be related with proportions and harmony and other type of uh, skin, uh, average, if, you are if your traits are close to the average or not, that might cause you if you're beautiful or not. Okay. Right, so you fall into kind of a, a middle range of things. That's when you look most pleasant to people. Exactly. So if you are close to the normal, uh, meaning that if you're close to the majority, you are more likely to be considered pleasant or attractive. Ah, I got you. That's and one of the things, one of the researches regarding this, this thing about the beauty. Yeah, and, and, and what I loved, which 
makes so much sense to me and has helped me a lot when I'm doing facial surgery and rhinoplasty in particular is the, the concept of facial flow that you described. And it's really nice to use this because when I'm doing rhinoplasty, rhinoplasty sits in the middle of the face, but the nose doesn't sit in the middle of the world. It's in the middle of that person's face. And a person's face, their forehead might be up here, their chin might be over there. It would be weird if I went and placed the nose all the way over here. So the nose, when we try to make it symmetric, we're actually trying to make it sit in the middle of that person's face. And this facial flow concept is amazing because I use that very quickly to describe to patients, listen, you have to understand that your face doesn't go straight down <laughs> like this. Uh, it curves a little bit. And I'm going to make your nose not 100% symmetric to go against everything else on your face. I'm going to make it fit. And in the end, you might perceive that to be in a symmetry. But if you look at your face the way I'm looking at it, this is how it's supposed to sit. So how do you describe this whole, this whole concept to people? Okay, so... Um... When when we try when we try to as you and as plastic surgeons and dentists we have to follow some lines to to guide our to guide us into the smile design for example so uh, everybody use uh, tend to use the facial midline but actually if you look into the into your academy for example plastic surgeons don't mm -hmm. have a definition for for facial midline. Mm -hmm. Orthodontic, uh, the Academy of Orthodontics don't have a definition, and actually it's so difficult because if you look into the face, it's not a regular geometric shape, so it's mathematically impossible to define a, a midline, a facial midline. So that was one of the my my question, which is the the facial midline if I want to guide myself. So I realized that these mathematical um, formulas actually don't work very much in mild asymmetric faces. Mm -hmm. So if you have a quite a symmetric face, okay, you can use mathematical proportions or uh, solutions to, to position your nose or your dental midline. But this concept of the facial flow is something like, is, a, is, a, is an alternative. So basically, our eyes uh, look into something like uh, a picture or a landscape, and we, we call that a composition. So we can imagine easily three dots can form a line. So in the same way, if you look into the center of the face, the facial structures that are in the center of the face can also describe a line. Okay, And the structures are the forehead here, the nose, the philtrum and the chin, mm -hmm. all these four structures can define a line. But this line is normally not very straight. Normally it has a curve, it can go to the right, it can go to the left, it depends on the degree. And that's also very nice to look into the flow because if it's very curved, you tend to have more asymmetric face. And if you describe a nest shape like Tom Cruise, it means that you have a lot of tension. It means that the middle, uh, the middle part of your face is not uh, in harmony with a, with a, with the lower part of your face. So that's so, yeah. So the, the the observation or the discussion no longer becomes about symmetry, but it's more about how your face sits in harmony or how it flows, and if it's going against itself or in a very exactly. kind of smooth direction. Exactly. Um, so in like our that. perception, two lines, parallel lines, the relationship in two line, between two lines more uh, harmonic is all, always the parallelism. Okay? If you start to have, like this, you start to have some tension. So we, w we want to ideally have everything more or less parallel. So in between the lines of our face, so mm -hmm. basically is how the facial flow works. And here I want, to, in this slide, basically I want to say that we, we want to, to have the teeth, the axis of the teeth, the midline of the teeth, always also in harmony with the facial flow. So mm -hmm. if the, the, the structures of the face go, go towards 
the left side, you want to avoid to have one teeth or the dental midline going the other against way. it. The yeah, other so, way. Yeah, you don't want to fight the flow. You want to go with the flow. As everybody says, you want to go with the flow. You, you want to go with the flow, exactly. And the other thing is that this, this, uh, this analysis was also thinking about what if you have the nose is going towards one side and the chin is going to, towards the other side. Mm -hmm. So then you have a compromised case. As a dentist, for example, you cannot solve that. So then we have to work with a plastic surgeon, for example, to do a rhinoplasty. And so that, that, that's what I see very often when patients come in and they have a, I'd say, a, a poorer type of harmony to their face and the nose really stands out as being crooked. The most crooked noses look like that because they have, they, and they look like a broken nose, but it's because the nose deviates one way, but then the chin is curving in the other direction. And now their deviation, which is really maybe 10 degrees off the, the midline, 20 degrees off the midline, looks like it's 30 or 40 because you're comparing exactly. it to where the rest of the face is going. Uh, so I, I, I think there's a huge, uh, huge benefit when you're going after lips, teeth, uh, and trying to correct them that you, you know, we, we've, we've all worked together to make sure everything kind of sits together. Because as you're saying, you can go try to fix the teeth on somebody who has a nose going that way and a chin going that way. And it's a very difficult problem to solve to the point where you really can't get it to sit perfectly as to, to, to where you'd want it unless you go fix the other things. Yes, it's like, it's like you're doing a painting with a, with, a, with a very bad frame. If you want to make the, 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 the painting look good, you have to have a nice frame. So as a dentist, this analysis basically makes the dentist look into the face, classify them, make them diagnose if you have a compromised situation, if you want to have someone to do even a Botox sometimes, because sometimes it's just like the lips, the commentators, the commentators mm. play a big role in this thing about the facial flow or the nose. So if you have like the yes shape, the one that the nose goes to one side and the chin is going to be towards the opposite one, we call the disruptive flow or S shaped flow mm -hmm. is the most compromised. But sometimes, sometimes very curved shapes of the flow also need someone to, to fix it. Sometimes we have to go to the bone uh, surgery, like orthognitic surgery or something like yeah. that. Yeah, so, so, so what are we seeing in this face that's causing tension on one side and harmony on the other? Okay, so in this, in this patient, you have one flow that goes, let me put here to see the, the size, but basically the, the, the midline of that patient, the dental midline is going against the flow. So mm -hmm. what, we, what we want to achieve on her is basically change the orientation of the dental midline so we can be in, have the teeth in harmony with, our, with, our, with, our, with the rest of the face, you understand? Yeah. I'm not sure if people can see the details. Here in, in my computer is quite difficult to see. Yeah, it's it's hard. I I don't know how to zoom in on it there. So yeah, so you're just trying to get the the midline okay. teeth to go me, with the rest. Yes, let me explain the. So in in this patient, if you can you show me the the um, the slide before, then so mm -hmm. this no the, the next one sorry yeah this one so this patient has a very very curved flow towards the right side of the patient. So in this type of patients, as a dentist, for example, either we think about changing the frame with a plastic surgeon or whatever specialist, or we have to adapt as a dentist. So this is a very uh, a case where I can illustrate pretty well that I cannot make symmetric teeth on this patient because everything is going towards the right side. Mm -hmm. and so. 
the IT category, and the deep now is we project and we design the deep according to the facial flow, meaning that we, on purpose, we incline a little bit deep towards the right side of the patient, make it look more harmonic. I got you. Yeah, and and um, the patients I see that look the nicest to have had dental work and that's uncommon is you know the patients who their dentist took that into account and they leave the teeth flowing. They leave the teeth slightly irregular. They have different shapes on each teeth. Uh, they're not all the same in big block veneers. Yes, we call as, them the perfect imperfections. Yeah. yeah so basically of, these are the imperfections that we want to incorporate into the teeth that mm -hmm. makes it did look very natural. As and then, was, yeah, instead ahead. of getting like horse teeth, so. Yeah, exactly. Because we can, we, we can make teeth look so symmetrical and so that they won't look natural at all. So what we're doing now is incorporating technology that copy uh, natural teeth from patients, from people that mm -hmm. we consider beautiful, and we copy them in the 3D and we can actually print them or anneal them and make like nice veneers, nice teeth, nice crowns with natural shapes. That's that's a big advantage. Not depending on to have a good ceramist that can, and we are not depending on the art of this technician to do a nice work on the patient's mouth. We are just incorporating the, the natural shapes from, from the patients. And, and what are we seeing here on your face? Okay, this is my face, and you can see I have a right flow. And uh, what, what I want to, to illustrate over here is the facial flow was at the beginning, um, the, the thinking process was meant for a dentist, but now I, you can adopt this analysis if you're a plastic surgeon as yourself, Ben. Here you can, you can start to draw lines in your the structures that you are going to to work. Me as a dentist, I draw a lot of lines into mm -hmm. the teeth, into the plane of occlusion, but here you can draw, and also even in a, even you can think about, for example, the... Um, the the nasolabial fault? Mm -hmm. Yes, everything. Everything you draw lines that you want to, to have them in harmony with the other parts of the face. So basically the, the facial flow is one vertical force that you have in the middle of your face that marks a, a trend like it's going to the left or it's going to the right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can have a neutral. Good patients who tend to be more symmetric, we call them to have a neutral flow. Means mm -hmm. that it, it's like pointing into the center. But those cases are not that much. Right. Right. And right. By your so experience, then probably you see that when patients age, they tend to have more. They get more, more exaggerated age. asymmetries at, as they age. Right. And um, the biggest contribution to that is, uh, is again, it's, it's the dominance of the face over time. So as you lose volume in the face and as you lose tissue rigidity or turgor in the face, uh, it starts to droop, and the more you droop, the more exaggerated all the shadows become because, uh, again, the, the dominant side is going to be holding everything up a little bit better than the non-dominant side. And you see that very obviously on people's faces. If you look back on their nasolabial folds, they tend to get deeper. The uh, malar septum tends to get deeper, and the pre sulcus tends to get deeper as the face kind of droops, and the asymmetries become more prominent. Now, if you go add basic volume to the face, okay, diffusely, the person looks more symmetric, even if you don't correct the asymmetry. If you go do a facelift and you lift both sides equally, they look more symmetric, even though you didn't do anything asymmetrically. And the reason for that is that all the shadows become less dominant, less exaggerated. You okay. don't see the shadows on the face as much That's anymore, so you don't see the asymmetries. And so the shadows can go away with lifting. The shadows can get better with adding volume. And again, you don't have to fix any part of the symmetry. You just lift or volumize, and they become more symmetric. There are some things that are permanently changing as you age uh, with 
muscles being thicker on one side or fat growing more on one side uh, than, than the other or, or losing more. And that's typically not a major contribution. It's kind of small. But there are people who have something called lipodystrophy, which means they're actually losing fat much more substantially on one side of the face than the other because one side is acting very different than the other their whole lives, whether it's metabolism or scarring or anything like that. But in, in general, if you look at a face as it's aging, you'll see that the shadows on each side, uh, they're both getting deeper, but the non-dominant side tends to be the droopier side with less shadows. The dominant side tends to have deeper shadows on the lower parts of the face, but sits higher. Um, you know, that's, that's okay. kind of... How would, you, how would you define like what is dominant from not dominant in your, in your perspective? Because I read so much about it and it's, it's kind of... Sometimes it's difficult to, to identify. Well, so if you look at the different parts of the face, let's say you put it into thirds, you can have a dominant brow on the right, but a dominant smile on the left. Oh, okay. Because the facial nerve doesn't have to work symmetrically on, on either side, and the nerve actually feeds back to the other side. So it doesn't have to be um, okay. all right or all left. It can be different. Most people that I've seen are one side. So one side is dominant uh, completely, and it has something to do maybe with the bony structure underneath. I'm not sure but the brow sits a little higher on that side. The smile always pulls harder to that side and the nose slightly pulls to that Go side, forward. which makes sense because if you've done, if you've seen rhinoplasties, I can go take a nose and set it into midline. Okay. And I can set it into midline uh, without using concrete or screws or anything. I set it into midline as a cartilage structure in the middle and over the next year, I see the nose starts to deviate again. And doctors have attributed that to warping of the cartilage. But if you go back in and you look at the cartilage, the cartilage hasn't warped. It's not warping or changing shape. It's being pulled. It's slowly being pulled to that side by the smile. As somebody smiles and laughs and talks, they, they, they pull to one side. And some it's people simple. are very exaggerated in that, and their nose gets pulled over much faster. And you can see that, and you start looking for that in, in patients' faces. Look at this case. This case, this case is really nice because you can see some of, some of that type of patient with a very asymmetric uh, smile. Yeah. Also pulling the the nose um, wing mm -hmm. on the right side. This is from um, from uh, Altamiro. Uh -huh, Flavio. From, you know, <laughs> from Flavio. Yes. Um, in this patient, you have like a neutral flow, means that the center of the face is quite, quite straight, although we have this tension caused by the, the upper lip. And even the nose is causing this, the wing nose is pulling like up. Yep. So in this case, Altamiro just used some Botox to, to correct the position of the, of the upper lip and a little bit reduce the activity of the lower lip too, okay, and make made everything much more harmonic. And actually, we are not we are not talking about here symmetry. It's basically avoid tension. And if we understand a little bit about this, the way we our eyes read uh, faces and everything, we, we we start it starts to make to make a lot of sense. Our brains normally takes like get thirty to milliseconds. To look into to stare uh, to look into the eyes when we stare at the face, you know that it's like the first thing when we stare at the face we look into the eyes, and that uh, and we have a reason for that. Do you know what is the reason for that? By no, the, it's a survival instinct because it's the first structure in our face that express fear. So if we are in danger, I look at the people that surrounds me. And if I'm in danger, I will look into the eyes and I realize I'm in danger by looking into the eyes of the people that surround you. You're, you're, you're assessing them. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. We do this for a long time. So that's, that's why we look into the, into the eyes first. And after that, we go straight to the mouth. Okay. And then we go to the nose. So it's basically it's like a vertical movement. So that's mm -hmm. why facial flow is so important because we read the mouth, the, the, the faces 
not from the right to the left or the right to the right, we read the, the faces vertically. Yeah, yeah, which which makes sense. And you look at the attention always going to the eyes and the mouth being kind of the white, bright parts of the face that really draw the uh, attention. And people, when they talk to you, they're talking to you with their mouth and with their eyes exactly. as well. So it's the, the primary mode of communication. Now, now this fo photo is great because um, this is what I try to explain to patients a lot. When, they, when you look at the photo in the before, everything is pulling to the right side of the face. It's also canted and tilted where the right side, the nose sits higher, the smile goes farther on that side, and then you can see the chin actually tilts in the opposite direction. So this is a normal thing to see on people, and the only way if somebody wants to correct that or soften that, uh, in my mind, is you have to mess with the wiring of the face because it's not a structural problem. It's not that one cheek is giant and one tooth is huge and the chin is bigger. It's just a wiring issue, meaning that the brain is wired to pull that right side more. And you can't go operate on the brain to fix this. So instead, you go down to the nerve terminal and you put some Botox. And that prohibits the brain from getting the muscles on that side of the face to, to pull harder. So... Uh, the, the after photo looks softer, a little more pleasant, and you don't see as many shadows um, on, on that side of the face. It looks more relaxed, I think, when, when, when he's smiling now. So some people just have hypercontracture. They have too much expression, too much strength in their face. One side, yes. Very yeah, and think, yeah, and this was an easy thing to do. Not easy. This is actually difficult to, to do that without messing somebody up but it's a very simple thing to do in terms of procedure. You put a couple dots of Botox here and there. Um, and Altamiro is amazing at those things. Yeah, he's, he's an artist. He's an artist. Yeah, sometimes and patients sometimes complain about the teeth or uh, they, they see the teeth crooked. And it's not the teeth. It's just the, the frame, the lip frame. It's not it's showing more teeth in one side than, than the other. So, and it's not a dental problem. It's, as you said, it's, it's a yeah yeah and and so so here what was done on this patient because okay, she's got patient, substantial substantial asymmetry beforehand with the left side of the lip sitting higher and covering the mouth you can't even see the bottom of the teeth and um, okay, this is octavio Sindra case and in this type of cases uh instead of me as a dentist uh, adapt for example the teeth into the, the facial flow of the patient, we want to change the flow of the patient because all these bone structure are not correct. We have more, we have a, how do you say, the ramos, the, the height of the jaw in mm -hmm. one side is much higher than the other one. Yeah. So basically this patient had a orthognatic surgery before the ortho and the dental treatment have been done. So that's, that's, that's uh, Octavio that have done the, the orthodontic surgery planned on the computer. So basically, we changed the flow from the right into a straight. We made this uh, more favorable case to work on our mouth. So, so who does this patient go to for analysis? Any of us? Or is there one of us that she, she's like luckier that she ran into? Actually, she, she, she was patient of Octavio, but you mean that in the, in, sometimes this patient, I see a lot of people who, that don't who, see who these things. Who tells her that your best option is to go to an orthognathic surgeon for something like this? So, so, it depends on where the, where the patient went for the first time, but a lot of times patient goes to the dentists, and sometimes dentists try to correct this with, try to do ortho or correct the teeth without looking to the because if you don't know a lot it's, it's like when you have a hammer just a hammer as, as your tool you know you try to correct everything like everything looks like a neck but in this case you, you definitely need to to to, to open your horizons and, and make a, a complete diagnosis of the face with the bone structure and everything yeah, because that's that, them to see that. You know, that's an amazing result, and I don't think most doctors, dentists, orthognathic, oral surgery, um, 
you know, see everything that can benefit the patient unless you've really listened to a lot of these lectures. Because I wouldn't look at this patient back in the day and say, okay, you know what? The jaw is asymmetric. Her bite is open on one side. I wouldn't think those things. Um, now that I look at patients, I do think that. And indeed, if I saw her, I would take a look at her teeth. I would take a look at how she's biting. I would take a look at the positioning of her jaw. And I'd say, you know what? This is a bony issue with dental implications. Go see the orthodontic guy. I have no idea what he's going to do, but go talk to them. <laughs> and, um, you know, in patients like this, it makes a huge difference on how pleasant they look, how soft they look. Um, it's, and it's, it's, it, it has improved her symmetry, but I think there's more to it than just symmetry. She just looks more pleasant overall. Exactly. She, uh, everything. She also has some disproportion, disproportions in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the thirds, which Octavio just corrected by, by doing the surgery. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that's great. And where's this? This is uh, the, the this one. This is our clinic here in Marbella. That's Anna. Okay, she's, she's sitting right there. <laughs> uh, this is where we work here in Marbella. That's our, our clinic. Javier, that you, it was yesterday? Yes. Yesterday, yeah. Javier also also works in, uh, in the hospital and sometimes he comes to do, to do some surgery here. So... For people who don't know where Marbella is, it's where Javier and Bruno, they're both in heaven. They're in the south of Spain where you're just surrounded by like beautiful beaches, beautiful you have town, nice mountains. Nice, nice mountains. mountains. Yeah, so, going down to Porto Banu and <laughs> those places. It's it's really incredible. I haven't been there for, for a while, but I've got lots and lots of memories from being in, in Marbella. You have, to, you have to come and visit. You like boats and cars. That's the right yeah. place <laughs> to be. Yeah, I love Marbella. I, li I like it much more than Malaga, but I heard Malaga has gotten a lot nicer too. Yes, yes, yes. It, it, it changed a lot in the last years. Yeah, should, so, we, we have to do something with Javier today. Yeah, I would love to. We'll, we'll, we'll do something all together over there soon. So there's a very important question for you. Are you related to Uncle Jesse? <laughs> Uncle Jesse is Uncle Jesse. This is from Full House. It's <laughs> Full House? Oh, okay. You, you, you're talking about... Uh, Stamos. 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 Yeah, everybody makes that question when, when I lecture in the U.S. That's so funny. <laughs> There's a lot of people. I got confused. In New York once, someone just saw me in a, with, a, with my glasses. And people was, are you? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mistook you for. So um, there's a couple of questions just on, on uh, you know, what, what, what they did to the jaw to make it even. Uh, that is, on that specific patient, I'm guessing he did some sagittal osteotomy or... or, or he, did he, both, did? he did both arches, meaning he actually made... He cut the, the jaw in, in three pieces, the lower jaw and also the upper jaw, to make everything like equal and more symmetric and also to, to have the, the teeth to fit. Mm -hmm. So basically, she has this part of the, uh, of the jaw larger, okay? So we cut like in here and also make shorter, put everything, rotate everything, okay? And all these procedures are, are now uh, like planned in, in advanced in a computer. So when, when they cut the bone, they know what they are cutting. That's the, one of the biggest, biggest advance that we have lately is this, because before that, that's why it depends on, a lot on the surgeon before, because mm. you, you have to do this by looking at the face and okay, more or less here, more or less there. And now everything is planned on the, on the computer. And basically, the soft tissue basically goes and follow. I'm not a specialist in orthognathic. I'm restorative and, and <laughs> dentist, but yeah, we, 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 we learn a little bit about this. And, and Octavio, you can have Octavio in, into your podcast. Yeah, yeah, I will. I will. You change people's faces a lot. It looks like plastic surgeon, but because it is actually, it's it's incredible. Yeah, what he does, 
and he also parties very hard. I saw him uh, for heavy. <laughs> I saw him for Heveyon in um, in Trancoso. Are you saw him in Trancoso? Oh my god, <laughs> yeah. I, I miss you guys. That's a nice spot. I saw you that you did. You almost didn't party there, right? You almost didn't sleep. I, yeah, no, there was no sleep. There was yeah. The, <laughs> my my Brazilian friends are all crazy, so <laughs> there was no sleep. Okay, man. All right. Well, hopefully, we're gonna set up something soon to come to Marbella once this this mess is all over. Um, okay. Yeah, thank you thank so you. much for inviting me. No, thank you. So okay. for everybody who wants to find Bruno, he lives in Marbella. It's the One Clinic. Uh, his Instagram is above. It's, I think, Bruno.Pereira. And what's your website? My website is OneClinicMarbella.com. One Clinic Marbella. Very easy to find. All right. Okay. Take thank care. Thank you so much, Uncle Jesse. You're welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs>